<laughs> All right, dudes, uh, Bill Blowers again from taprack.com and primarysecondary.com. I uh, did a modcast, I don't know, maybe a week ago, something like that, um, but we were talking about uh, slings amongst other things and, and setting up and that kind of deal, and, uh, and then some dudes had some questions uh, about slings and sling setup. So I'm going to cover a couple of things here. Uh, these are my takes on, on uh, proper sling use, the right type of sling, um, and then how I adjust it and set it up for me. Uh, based on my job uh, as a SWAT dude. So um, first thing I'm gonna cover, man, is uh, I'm gonna take you back in the day, um, back into time for a minute, uh, and talk about the, this sling right here, which was a three-point sling, uh, kind of a throwback to the uh, MP5 days. Uh, this end obviously attached to a stock buttstock. This went forwards wherever the heck you had a spot for it. Um, and we did some janky uh, stuff to try and make these fit. Uh, when the uh, uh, the only fittings on the gun were the, the standard locations for a parade sling. So uh, got them stuck on there obviously in some fashion um, and then you kind of looped yourself through it like this uh, and there it sat. If you wanted to release it, use some type of a pull tab, you could pull on it and then it would cut down on you uh, and kind of become a single point for lack of a better word uh, even though it was still ta attached to the front. Uh, all the weight was here and I, I think this was a throwback to uh, <clears throat> when we had mp5s uh, that was the mp5 sling uh, and then as AR started getting popular in law enforcement uh, somebody made this sling up um, as an adaptation of that so um, pretty much a piece of junk for me as a lefty it was a non-starter uh, because that extra strap hung right over the ejection port uh, and gave me some malfunctions gave me some issues so I uh, don't see these very often anymore occasionally I do in a class um, it, particularly an agency that still has MP5s, that kind of a thing. Um, and so I'll see some dudes uh, pop into class with those uh, on occasion. Next kind I'm going to talk about here is a single point. Uh, this one happens to have a bungee. Most of the single points do. Uh, some do not. Uh, and again, this isn't a bust on if you recognize what company makes this sling. I'm not cracking uh, on the company, the, the, the quality of the sling, the materials, the sewing, that kind of stuff. That's all there. Uh, I'm talking specifically about the issues with the sling. So uh, single point sling. You're going to throw down with it uh, just like you normally would um, and then you're going to attach somewhere uh, right back by the uh, castle nut or back in here is typical where I see them attached to dudes. And so the problem with these is if you put it onto where it's comfortable, particularly with armor, uh, and then you let it go, the sling, um, it, it hangs the rifle uh, lower than I like it uh, by a couple of inches. The down, other downside is obviously it's on a bungee retention system. Uh, so if I'm running, moving, that kind of thing, the sling wants to bounce. Uh, and create some issues for me. So uh, what I hear dudes say is, well, I like the single point because if I'm gonna switch uh, shoulders, for instance, I can just kick it over. It's really easy to accomplish that uh, with a single point sling uh, and I can run both strong and support side shoulder uh, very easily with it, so that's why I like it. Well, I can do that with a two point as well and I'm gonna show it to you here in a second. Um, the down, that one benefit, and it is beneficial, uh, I will absolutely agree with you that it's easier to go support side uh, and stay fixed in your sling without having to do any adjustments. Um, but that one benefit uh, isn't worth uh, all the other uh, issues that you get with it. And the biggest issue for me, in addition to the bounciness of it, uh, if you tighten it up, now you're trying to fight sling tension as you push the gun out, um, but the other issue is lack of uh, retention of the rifle. So uh, as a SWAT guy, I'm, gonna, I'm more inclined to uh, go hands-on with folks than shoot them, just the nature of the work that I do. Uh, and so when I let go of the rifle, it's only attached to this one point and it becomes a big swinging mess particularly if I go to bend down to cuff somebody, uh, and now I've tried to get the rifle out of my way, for instance, I bend down, rifle swings forward, cracks them in the head, and it makes a compliant person non-compliant in a hurry. Uh, and uh, that ain't my job anyway. I'm not supposed to be hurting folks um, unless they meet certain, certain thresholds and then I can use force, but a compliant guy is never gonna be at that threshold. He's compliant, so uh, I don't wanna hurt him. So I've heard with that guy say, well, just trap it behind your arm. And now you go down, bend down to, uh, to cuff and do whatever you need to do, and I've basically captured the rifle uh, behind my own uh, tricep. Yes, that works, but it's also a long, uh, uh, the, the front of it is hanging down here um, so that when I go to take a knee or go into a felony cuffing kind of a thing, um, it's sticking into the ground, it's jabbing into the guy's back, it's doing that stuff. And then the last one I hear as well, add one more bungee to your belt. Now you extend that bungee, stick the rifle into that loop, let it go, and now it keeps the, the muzzle where you want it in a little bit better fashion. Now when I bend over, it's not smacking dudes. Um, and that's great uh, for compliant folks when we have time, right? So me and my partner enter the room, get on the ground, everybody complies. Uh, hey, buddy, cold cuff, so that he, I'm covering him. He can have plenty of time to you know, undo a retention device. Um, 
either whether it's a hook or a bungee cord that he's taped to the belt, that kind of thing. He has all the time in the world to get that gun set up uh, to go do uh, that felony compliant cuffing. But he doesn't have that time when he makes entry into a room uh, and we're uh, very close quarters of a guy and they've got their dukes up and they want to have a fight. So now he's got to ditch his rifle and start trying to go into fisticuffs and you can already just see what happened. The rifle starts banging around. Uh, and it makes it really hard to throw your dukes um, or get down on a guy if you have to with this thing flopping around in front of you. Uh, the other uh, last downside I'll get you is this, if a guy gets control of the rifle with the bunginess of it, um, he can get that thing rotated and turned toward me pretty easy uh, and potentially start shooting me uh, in places that I don't want to be shot. So I'd rather have more retention from the outset. So I do not like uh, single point slings. I don't like the kind uh, like this one. And there are many other ones out there where you can then transition it into a more traditional two point uh, or even all the way out at the end of the rail at nine o'clock um, because you're still got uh, the, the bungee system set up. <clears throat> and all of this transitioning of where the sling mount is and that kind of a thing uh, to me is a big waste of time, uh, particularly when time is precious and or very little of it exists. So. Uh, don't like the single points, uh, don't like the, uh, the ones that transition and give you the option of uh, making it into a two-point or something else. If you're going to do all that, then you may as well stick uh, with a standard two-point sling. So lo lots of good slings out there that you can choose from. This is a Sierra Attack sling. Uh, uh, it, it's a really, really good sling. Uh, right now it is my favorite sling, even though there are, there are plenty of good ones out there. Uh, reminiscent of a variety of slings that are on the market. So the VCAS uh, sling. Uh, with the way it has the, uh, the, the, uh, the piece of nylon here that you can rip back and forth to, to adjust. Uh, this comes with a piece of billet aluminum that slides pretty easy. The, uh, the straps uh, are pretty uh, uh, slippery, uh, so when, if you want to adjust it, it goes quickly, but it gives you plenty of uh, grabbing power uh, once it's set, so that's a good thing. Padded sling or not, I don't care. I'm usually wearing armor, so the armor uh, provides the padding for me. Um, and it's a non-issue. So great sling here. The, like I said, the V-Cast sling, another dynamite sling, V-Tac sling, uh, also a good one. And then the Proctor sling are all ones that I've used and like uh, and have no issue. I like QD rings on mine, um, but I run my sling all the way out forward at the nine o'clock position, or sorry, at the three o'clock position uh, as a lefty. And then when I set the sling, so I get into it and it's pretty damn tight. So uh, I want that retention there when I let it go, and obviously with magazines, uh, with a full rack, the gun's going to be sitting about this far off of me as it hits my, my, uh, my armor, and it's really hard to rotate this thing now to get into a position to shoot me anywhere but in the feet. Um, the benefit of this for me is now I can bend down and cuff, and the weapon stays tight to my back. Uh, it's not swinging around bat bashing people. Um, as I let it go, it comes typically hangs right into the front. So if I need to start working somebody, uh, it's out of the way uh, of where I'm uh, trying to, to, to throw, those, uh, throw those bombs on a guy. And just the way that I'm set up as a right-handed pistol shooter, lefty rifle shooter, uh, let it go. And most of the two points, if I'm all the way out at the end at the three o'clock, the rifle tends to drop in this fashion, which then opens up my pistol magazines uh, if I have to transition to pistol and do that kind of a thing. So I like to, the two points, I like them way all, all the way out the front, you know, for me as a lefty up to three o'clock, um, that kind of a thing. So some of the stuff that comes up, well, you know, you're way out here and now if, I, if I'm gonna wrap into that sling or really put some pressure on it in a non-free floated gun, uh, I'm potentially torquing uh, the barrel and again, I'm gonna miss the shot because of it and that is true. Um, comment popped up about, well, you know, with a laser device on here, it's kind of the same thing. If I'm gonna wrap into it and, and take a precision shot, I'm going to pull my laser uh, off target, and that is probably true. Um, I, I will probably be able to torque it, but I, I think that if I, I can't imagine a time that I would be doing a quote precision shot with my laser, um, it would be something where I wouldn't have to put much pressure on the sling at all. I'm just going to come up uh, and make the shots from here, and I do that all the time from zero to 100 yards, uh, and I can bang uh, steel uh, till the cows come home without having to get really wrapped into the sling and, and doing a bunch of stuff. Now, when I work precision, if I'm trying to be very, very tight, uh, even at sh <clears throat> short distances, or if I'm trying to shoot really far uh, and from a standing on support, I will come underneath the sling. Uh, sometimes I'll wrap it around the magazine if I need to, but I'll get all of this, uh, the sling up that I can and really put some pressure on it against my, uh, my face body uh, and try and lock things in. And I can do that with a two-point sling out at, the, uh, uh, out at the end of the three o'clock position. So if I come into here to negate the potential of torquing my barrel and that kind of a thing, uh, certainly it works, man, uh, but the gun becomes way more floppy uh, because the two points of contact are tighter together. So 
it's going in the same direction, but now if a guy wants to, he could potentially uh, get the, the gun higher on me. Obviously, it's slung uh, a little bit higher on the gun. Uh, potentially, he can get it turned in a position now where he's shooting me in the hips, uh, lower guts, that kind of a deal, um, it, and I just lose some control. Uh, if I let go of it and go to bend down, um, the muzzle is almost automatically going right into the deck. Uh, or bashing into the guy's back when I'm trying to cuff that kind of a thing uh, and so I just don't do I think there's less control of the gun uh, And it's in the, the main reason uh, that I have heard is you know, get back near the delta ring So that I'm not torquing uh, the muzzle. Well, that doesn't apply to me um, I, I may torque the rail, uh, but I don't care about it with the laser uh, and with a free-floated uh, gun not a big deal so Right now as it's set up. Uh, this is about where I like to have it um, somewhere in this range. So if you think about where do you mount your gun into your shoulder, uh, let it go and it should kind of hang out in that same spot. Uh, kind of, sort of, right? So everybody's a little bit different of how you like stuff set up. So here's how I run this thing uh, for all of my different stuff, right? If I want to, I'll turn it into a single point uh, and run it like a necklace. Or if I need the, uh, the retention, the control of the gun, uh, then I'm gonna stick it into a standard two point uh, and, and use it in this configuration like I have right now. So. As I set the gun up, I, I keep my sling pretty tight. It's going to come across the back, and I typically just throw my elbow against it in this fashion. So as I make an entry, I kind of look like this. Uh, sling is sitting against my arm, and that is the tightness that I'm going to run. Uh, obviously, with armor, it would be a little bit loose right now, but it's going to be in here. So now I get the position or get to a point where I'm going to use a barricade or potentially go to prone, uh, do something where I, I want to manipulate the gun a little bit more quickly, switch shoulders, for instance. Um, the only thing I got to do at this point is let go and drop my arm and I just turned it into a necklace. So now if I'm going to switch shoulders, pretty easy to make that happen um, off of that necklace configuration versus the standard two point. Uh, other benefit I have of it is if I run it in this fashion again and now I make entry uh, and do wants to get it on with a fist fight, I would not go to the necklace mode. Instead, I'm just going to drop the gun straight down. The gun wraps around me uh, and now it's tight. I can cuff. So I can throw my bombs, I can do whatever I need to do uh, and maintain control of the weapon, retention of the weapon. So a couple things there, food for thought. Uh, you know, Really think about what you're trying to accomplish with your sling. Um, in my case, as a cop, I gotta be thinking about all of my different mission parameters and what do I need uh, to get out of a sling um, and set it up a obviously appropriate for what I'm trying to do. Uh, if I were a military dude and maybe I'm running some, trying to make some, uh, some decent shots you know, after 300, 400 shots, might change my mindset a little bit on this thing. Um, you know, if I'm a uh, Joe uh, three gunner uh, and working support side or maybe doing some weird shit, uh, potentially then a, a single point sling. Um, so I'm giving you my uh, opinion based on what I do uh, with the gun, how, how I'm set to operate with it, and then my thought process uh, behind what I'm trying to do. I don't think there's ever a time uh, that you need a dedicated single point sling. So uh, all it says to me immediately is that you've never felt the tender touch of a woman. Um, and so get yourself a two point. Uh, lots, of good, lots of good ones out there, man. The Sierra Tech, like I said, Dynamite, VCAS, VTAC, uh, Proctor Sling, all good slings uh, that are going to do everything you want to do uh, with your rifle. And they will not inhibit you um, if you just practice with them and get used to um, uh, setting your sling tension, that kind of thing, uh, for what you're trying to accomplish. So. Short little video. Hope it was good information for you guys. Uh, Bill at taprack.com and primaryandsecondary.com. Bow!